Hello, welcome back to CVI updates on the go. So this week it was the how much game? Twenty second game week and for some twenty first because they had uh, they have a game remaining. So starting off, Bologna won two one against Brescia. The win means Bologna are now in tenth position. They have moved up and they have thirty points. And Brescia are firmly rooted at the bottom half of the table in the 19th position with 15 points. So that's not a very good sight. So expected goals at Bologna at 2.41 to Brescia 0.84. So what happened in the game? Let's go and find out. So Ernesto Torre Grossa scored in the 35th minute to give Brescia the lead before Ricardo Orsolini scored in the 42nd minute to equalize. Before Matteo Bani scored in the 88th minute, I mean, what's with the late score, late score lines this this game week? I mean, all over the European leagues. So, Brescia will be very very hard done, you know, because they consider in the ending moments and they require a win from somewhere or the other. Cagliari drew 2-2 with Parma Calcio 1913. Cagliari had an expected goal of 2.52 to Parma's 2.17. So where where are Parma in the table? Parma are in seventh position with 32 points, and Cagliari are in sixth with 32 points, and they are ahead just because of goal difference. So what happened in the game? Cagliari opened the score line when Joao Pedro scored in the 18th minute, but it didn't last long because Juras Kuka, Kuka scored in the 41st minute. Joao Pedro missed a penalty in the 52nd minute to make sure to make to give parma sorry cagliari the lead but it was not long before giovanni simeone scored in that 53rd minute to give cagliari the lead giovanni simeone is diego simeone's son for those who don't know and again a late equalizer in the 93rd minute parma's andreas cornelius who came i mean he started the game he didn't come off the bench he started the game he was former cardiff city player He scored, and again, it is a very, very sad <laughs> sight for Cagliari because if they would win, they would close the gap between themselves and AS Roma, who themselves lost this week. So, talking about AS Roma, AS Roma were defeated by Sassuolo by four goals to two, and they were very unlucky, very, very unlucky because expected goals at Roma at 2.84 to Sassuolo's. 2.34. That means AS Roma had higher quality chances and maybe bad finishing. So Francesco Caputo scored in the 6th minute for Sassuolo. Bef- again, he scored again in the 15th minute before Filip Juric Juricic scored in the 25th minute to give Sassuolo a 3-0 lead. In the 54th minute, former City player Edin Dzeko scored to pull one back, but everything. Still did not go according to plans because Lorenzo Pellegrini, the youngster, received the red card in the 68th minute. In the 72nd minute, however, Jordan Veretout scored via a penalty to make the score line by a bit respectable because it it was 3-2 at that time. But again, one minute later, Jeremy Boga, former Chelsea player, scored to make it 4-2. I mean, it just went. It was not. Roma's day. So, what does this match make out for Roma? Roma are in fifth position with 39 points, and Sassuolo are in 13th position with 26 points. So, Roma have dropped down from the Champions League spots, and this can be crucial for Fonseca because a lot will be hinging on Champions League qualification. So, lad. At, sorry, not Lazio. I was going to Lazio's game, but before that, we have Juventus and, Atal- and Atalanta's game. So Juventus won three nil against Fiorentina. Expected goals at Juventus at 2.89 to Fiorentina 0.42. So what happened in the game? We will see Cristiano Ronaldo open the scoring in the 39th minute when he converted a penalty, and he scored again in the 70- 79th minute, to, which was again a penalty. And Matteo Gilliatt scored in the 90th minute to make it three nil. So Cristiano Ronaldo now has scored in nine consecutive game and is hunting down Gabriel Barbosa, not Barbosa. I will say Gabriel Barbosa. 
Gabriel Batistuta's record of scoring in 11 consecutive games. So what does the scoreline mean? Juventus are top of the table with 54 points and they still have 3 goals advantage, 3 points advantage over second place Inter and Fiorentina are now in 14th position with 25 points and they have dropped down from the last week's position. So moving on, we have Atalanta who drew 2-2 with Genoa. Uh, expected goals at Atalanta at 2.22 to Genoa's 1.52. So Ra- Rafael Toloi opened the scoring in the 11th minute for Atalanta before Domenico Crisito, I think he played for Zenit before, converted a penalty to equalize the scoreline before Antonio Sanabria, I think he's a former Roma player, gave Genoa the lead in the 32nd minute. And Joseph Ilicic, who recently scored a hat-trick in, I think, the drubbing of AC Milan, equalized in the 34th minute. So after that, the other, other notable action was when Valen Berami, the Swiss international who played for West Ham, received the red card in the 81st minute. Other than that, there were no other significant action in the game. So what does the win mean? Atlanta could have won and pulled themselves away from Roma because they lost and they are now they have same points but Atlanta are ahead on goal difference so they bo- Atlanta are in fourth position with 39 points and Roma are in fifth position with 39 points so Atlanta could have won and they could have taken a two point lead but it is not what it is now so they are equal and it will be much much tougher and the Champions League race will be very very tight. So for, as for Genoa, they are in the relegation zone. They have, However, the draw has helped them to climb up. They now have 16 points and a goal difference of minus 20. Moving on, we had Lazio who again hammered SPL 2013 by 5 goals to 1. Expected goals at Lazio at 2.70 to SPL 0.84. So what happened, Ciro, Ciro Immobile scored in the second minute to give Lazio the lead before Felipe Caicedo scored in the 15th minute to make it 2-0 and, and Ciro Immobile again scored in the 28th minute to make it 3-0 before Felipe Caicedo scored in the 37th minute to give it to give the scoreline a very very rich look for Lazio and an embarrassing look for SPL. So Bobby Adikanias came off the bench to score in the 57th minute and make the score and 5-0 five nil, five nil before Simone Misroli, Miss, Miss I'm sorry if I butchered the name, in the, scored in the 64th minute to grab a consolation. So what does the win mean? Zatalan Lazio are in top form this year and they are now in third position, they were there last, year, last week also and they have 49 points and a game in hand so if they win the game in hand they will have 52 points they'll be two points behind juventus and they will leapfrog inter to the second position and talking of the counterpart spl spl are now rooted to bottom of the table with 15 points so i think they will be one of the leading candidates to go down in another game, AC Milan drew 1-1 against Hellas Verona. So expected goals are AC Milan at 1.76 to Verona's 1.19. Marco Faraoni opened the scoring for Verona in the 12th minute before Hakan Kalanoglu scored in the 28th minute to equalize the scoreline. Sofia Namravath got a red card for Verona in the 67th minute and the major talking point was Latin Iramid didn't play this game. And you can see what in what an impact he has. You know, when Zlatan is starting, auto opponents automatically are scared and will because of his stature and what he has achieved in the game. So AC Milan uh, are now in eighth position with 32 points. So they would want to qualify for Champions League. That will be the aim. But let's see. It's going to be difficult because the likes of Roma, Cagliari, and Atalanta, they are strong. They are all four or five of them, including Parma, are the teams which are fi- uh, fighting for one Champions League spot because Lazio, Inter and Juventus are clearly above them. The defense gulf in class between Juventus, Inter and Lazio and Atalanta are, is amazing because Lazio who occupy the third position and Atalanta who occupy the fourth position have a 10 point gap and that too Lazio have a game in hand. 
so it's simla na in 8th position with 32 points and their opponents for the day hellas verona are in 9th position with 30 points so talking of relegation candidates lecce won 4 nil against torino torino are having a bad run recently they got dropped by atalanta and again here by lecce lecce oh, it's some it's shameful for a club like torino so expected goals at lecce at 2.50 to torino 0.89 alexander diola opened the scoring in the 10th minute before antonin barak scored in the 18th minute to make it 2 nil philip Filippo Falcao scored in the 63rd minute to make it 3 nil before Gian Luca Lapadula scored in the 77th minute to make it 4 nil. He's converted the penalty basically. So Torino uh, is getting bad, very bad. From is going from bad to worse for Torino. So Lecce, the win means Lecce are now out of the relegation zone and by just three points they have three points separates Lecce who are in 17 and Genoa who are in 18th position. And talking of Torino, they are sliding down the table. They are now in 12th position with 27 points. So that is it from CL updates on the go. If you like the content, do like, share, and subscribe. Also, what do you want to do more? Yeah. Watch if you are not interested in information. We also have game section where we play quizzes, which may be entertaining because I kind of make a uh, fun out of myself and I do not take seriously and no one should take themselves seriously so you can see that also if you want other than that I have nothing to say and I will see you in the next video bye